Let's continue to read Amos chapter 8. Um, a basket of ripe fruit. Okay, so take note of this. Okay, because um, I believe this is a prophecy on a prophecy. Okay, let's continue. This is what the Sovereign Lord showed me. A basket of ripe fruit. What do you see, Amos? He asked. A basket of ripe fruit, I answered. Then the Lord said to me, The time is ripe for my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. And that day, declares the Sovereign Lord, the songs in the temple will turn to wailing. Many, many bodies flung everywhere. Silence. Hear this, you who tremble, uh, uh, you who trample the needy and do away with the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over that we may sell grain and the Sabbath be ended that we may market wheat, skimping the measure, boosting the price, and cheating with dishonest scales, buying the poor with silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, selling even the sweeping, sweepings with the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, I will never forget anything they have done. Will not the land tremble for this and all who live in, in it mourn? The whole land will rise like the Nile. It will be stirred up and then sink like the river of Egypt. In that day, declares the sovereign Lord, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your religious feasts into mourning and all your singing into weeping. I will make all of you wear sackcloth and shave your heads. I will make that time like mourning for an only son and the end of it like a bitter day. The days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land, not a famine of food or a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Men will stagger from sea to sea and wander from north to east searching for the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. In that day, the lovely young women and strong young men will faint because of thirst. They who swear by the shame of Samaria or say, as surely as your God lives, O Dan, or as surely as the God of Beersheba lives, they will fall never to rise again. Okay, so there's a lot here. Bible scholars, um, preachers, people who read the word believe that this is also talking about what is to come potentially in tribulations. Um, I'll read some of this again. Um, the days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land, not a famine of food or a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Um, because of a certain time and a certain event that may take place, that will, not may, will take place in a certain time. We'll get more information when we get to the book of Revelation um, of a time where it will may be difficult to hear the words of the Lord. Part of the reason why is because there's going to be some some people, some things going on. Um, there's going to be three, and precisely, um, the, the beast, the false prophet, and the antichrist. Um, we'll talk more about that. And so because the devil's going to be playing a role and he knows the word and he manipulates the word, but in order for people to hear it, hear its truth and hear its wisdom during a particular time, particularly the tribulation period, it will be difficult. It may be difficult. Um, so there's a lot here. So just take note because there's a lot of, um, Prophecy on prophecy. We also know that um, a lot of this um, does happen. They, um, when this happens, when they start getting attacked, and that right before Israel does go into exile, things of this nature do happen. Um, 
listen to this. Um, listen to what he's saying. Amos is saying. Hear this, you who trample the needy and do away with the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over that we may sell grain? And the Sabbath be ended that we may market wheat, skimping the measure, boosting the price, and cheating with dishonest scales, buying the poor with silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, selling even the sweepings with the wheat. Think about that too, it's the sweeping. So if you get the grains of wheat and some of that falls to the ground and they sweep it up along with dirt and dust and whatever and they sell that to people because why not? It's coming to a time where gluttony, where there is a lot of extreme wealth building, <laughs> Selfishness, sound familiar. <laughs> Things are getting small, but the price, the packages are getting smaller. They're getting filled with unnecessary things, but the price is rising unnecessarily. Sound familiar? <sighs> when we are right with the Lord, when we are right with the Lord... These things of gluttony, lust, things of sin are not there. They're not there. When we are having our walk with the Lord, we are filled with love. When we are right with the Lord, we are filled with love and love for others. And we want to share that. And we are blessed and we want to bless others and everyone be in the Lord's love and blessing. When we're not, when we're not skimping the measure, boosting the price, and cheating with dishonest scales is what happens. Because we start looking at things from our perspective, our selfish ambitions, our wicked, someone's wickedness, instead of relying on the Lord. Relying on the Lord and His love. Relying on the Lord and His, His great mercy. Relying on the Lord, the Good Shepherd. Relying on the Lord and His salvation. Before we go on, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? 